Welcome to another flight review, <laughs> and today we are flying Royal Air Morocco, the flag carrier of, yes, you guessed right, Morocco. After my terrible flights in Tunisia, which was a complete disaster, many of you suggested to try RAM. I have worked the numbers for you, and they have been quite surprising on both airlines. Currently, Tunis Air is operating 29 planes and employs 8,000 staff. It's quite a contrast if you compare it to Royal Air Morocco. The airline has 59 planes and only employs 4,500 staff. So let me do the math for you. Tunis Air requires 275 employees to keep a plane in the air while Royal Air Morocco needs only 76. This either suggests that Moroccans are super talented individuals or Tunisians just don't know how to run an airline, though these numbers rather suggest a lot of mismanagement and corruption to say the least. Today's trip starts in Casablanca on an early morning, taking a 4-hour flight to Istanbul on the airline's flagship, the 787 Dreamliner in economy class. Thanks to Royal Air Maroc joining the One World Alliance recently, I was able to make use of my status with British Airways, skipping the lines and use the business class check-in instead. I was able to get access to the airline's business class lounge, which was clean, but nothing really special. So that was a lot of fun getting into the airport like it's long queue because to do security checks but they have like kind of gangs outside who for a little tip they take you past the queues and then you're in the terminal but i wasn't in a rush so it was all good and if somebody is watching from royal air morocco uh your check-in agent her name is aisha she did an incredible job at the business class counter i'm very excited by the dreamline experience she set up and check-in and i have my own row so it looked very busy at the economy class check-in area. So I was just checking out the downstairs area, but there's much other in the business center and more seating. But now let's head to the gate and let's see if we can get a first glimpse of the Dreamliner. Thank you, bye. Thank you. So I was exploring the airport a little bit, so I am... Um, at the e-gates, which are on the basement floor, which is definitely going to be a bus boarding. Don't know what to make of it. And uh, so I went to the further gates, like the A-gates, where I was hoping I would get a bit of a view of the apron, but the airline at uh, the airport is a bit weirdly designed, so it's really hard to actually get a view of uh, the planes and such. But uh, we're boarding very soon, so I'm gonna head to the gate, and then we're off to Istanbul. So another floor down and then I get to the E-Gates. I actually flew um, Royal Amarok two days ago on a 737-800. So to get a little a bit of an idea of what you can expect today is that I was pleasantly surprised. It was really good, uh, though the plane was really old and not as competitive, but great crew, great, great catering. So today we're flying on their flagship, the 787 Dreamliner. So this is where it all comes down to today. started on time and once again thanks to my status I was allowed to take the smaller bus for business class passengers taking us to the remote stand. Today's plane is a seven year old 787-8 which was originally delivered in 2015 to replace the aging 767 fleet of Royal Air Maroc which now has been completely replaced. Hi there how are you? I'm all the way in the back. Ah. <laughs> a quick look at the business class cabin reveals 18 seats in a 222 configuration, featuring the same seat as you can find on Beeman Bangladesh oh, or Air Europe. And welcome to the economy class cabin with 256 seats in a 333 configuration, and I was in for a big surprise. Just wait for it. How are you? 
so guys and here we are welcome on board the dreamliner i'm, I'm a genius i actually picked the very best seat the one without a window i don't know how this could happen to me i didn't check seat girl and um yeah the boarding music is very unique for royal air morocco seat but i'm gonna like i checked uh expert flyer and it says row 32 was free so i'm gonna be like cheeky i'm gonna try and go there let's see if somebody claims it or not I know that this could end up very risky and extremely embarrassing, but I had to try my luck. So I saw a map, like an expert flyer, that row 32 was completely empty. Uh, so I'm gonna try my luck. I'm gonna act a little dumb and I'm gonna stay here. And if somebody comes and claims the seat, I will just go back to my seat. But like four hours without a window, that would be a nightmare. But in terms of cleanness, this plane is really dirty. Like there's crumbs everywhere on the seats. And also here, there's fingerprints. There's fingerprints all over the windows. It isn't very uh, nice to look at. But yeah, fingers crossed and let's hope that nobody's gonna come and sit here. Uh, I really hope this is gonna work out. If not, then I'm gonna go back and uh, Act like I can't tell the difference between 32 and 36, which I probably can't anyways. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. By using a VPN, you surf the internet safe and anonymously, and you get around censorship all around the world. Whether you want to surf Instagram in China, use Skype in Dubai, or watch adult movies in Saudi Arabia. And it works on all your devices too. My favorite perk? Finding cheaper flight deals by simply changing my IP address with Surfshark VPN. Something you can do too, to save some real money. Wow! Surfshark also helps me to watch all sorts of live streams, sport events and gives me access to almost all Netflix library from all around the world, wherever I am. Hey guys, and the good news is if you use the link in the description box below, you will get 83% off plus three additional months for free. What a great offer. Now let's go back to the review. So in case my plan doesn't work out, I'll just give you a bit of a window view right now. So I imagine it would look like this during takeoff. <laughs> I know, so bad, so bad, right? Every seat on this plane features a personal entertainment screen as well as a USB slot to charge your personal device. You have a foldable table and the infamous window dimming buttons. Yes, they walk past too. Damn it, two more buses have arrived, but there's not many people on, on those buses, so... I and another bo person walked past, so I really hope that I'm gonna remain lucky here. It's still looking good, it's still looking good. So there seemed to be some little issue because it's like the fifth time already that the crew went through the aisle here and is counting all the passengers. So um, maybe someone is missing or something has happened. Um, maybe the numbers don't match the loading sheet or whatever. So. All right, numbers match. We're closing the overhead bins. Um, also, the stairs are being removed, so we are on our way very soon. I've noticed that 70% of you guys are not subscribed yet, so if you want to make my day, please hit that subscribe button. It is totally for free. Thank you. We then taxi to the runway for an on-time departure. Let's go to Istanbul. So guys, I was going to show you the in-flight entertainment because there's a nice huge screen in front of me, but surprise, surprise, it's not working. Have a look. 
neither the one on 32B is working, as you can see. So now you're probably saying, ah, oh, maybe the in-flight entertainment is not switched on. No, the, the, the in-flight entertainment on 32C is perfectly functioning. Look at this. When I told the crew about the issue, they suggested to move my seat and take the aisle seat instead, before handing out some headphones. So it's time for lunch. Uh, first of all, totally mind blown that during COVID, an airline that I wouldn't expect to serve a hot meal does. So they're not being cheap, um, which is really cool. And a meal looks very fancy as well. And instead of like a cup, you get a whole can of Coke. So they're very generous here in their servings um, as well. I've never seen this, so, some, some salmon, which is really expensive. And I have no idea how to open this, but uh, that's also pretty, uh, pretty rad. Now we just have to find out what it tastes like. There was a, uh, you could choose between chicken or beef. I went for the beef, so uh, let's dig in. Excellent, really, really good. Um, beautiful, loving it, really good. It's a bit ironic that we are flying over Tunisian airspace right now. And some airlines, they serve muffin and cheese. And here in Royal Air Morocco, you get salmon. Salmon and cheese, cream cheese. I finished my meal and enjoyed the view out of the window while enjoying a beautiful cup of coffee when I remembered that I haven't reviewed the loo yet. But then I just decided to pretend to be asleep so my subscribers wouldn't notice. So the captain literally just announced uh, that we're going to be descending in 10 minutes. I was going to do a loo review but like <laughs> literally for half an hour it's been people after people going there so I, I don't feel like having a loo review today uh, speaking of loo and I don't want to offend someone but my time in Casablanca which is a really lovely town right but wherever you go in the city it smells like we the smell like of urine is literally everywhere I don't know why it is but they have a problem of like sewage or whatever it is but it seems like that people just piss everywhere and I don't want to offend anyone and maybe there's something I don't know but that was my impression like literally even my friend who I met there told me uh, said exactly the same that it smells really really bad it smells like pee everywhere I don't know why uh, other than that uh, when you go to Casablanca go check out the mosque uh, apparently, it is the second largest minaret in the world. It's really nice, really nice place to look at. Casablanca doesn't seem to be like too much of a tourist destination. People told me to rather go to Marrakesh or Fash, which are much more beautiful and much more touristic, uh, much more traditional, cultural, while Casablanca is more like the industrial capital of Morocco. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give you a full summary of today's flight. I have some really interesting, I have some really interesting feedback for this airline, um, and uh, I'll let you know once we are in Istanbul once again. Sometimes I feel like I live in Istanbul. The times of the times I come and uh, transit and pass through. After a typical two-hour taxi, we finally made it to the gate in Istanbul airport. So guys, and here we are. Welcome to Istanbul International Airport. Um, how am I going to summarize my flight? It's pretty good. I think Royal Air Morocco isn't too bad of an airline. Um, I would probably give it a 6.5 out of 10. Crew was lovely and I'm also happy that, that they aren't part of this crazy cost-cutting corona nonsense. They served a hot meal, they served beverages, uh, so it was overall very pleasant. Well, the only bummer was the in-flight entertainment. That is a bit sad, but overall, I don't think they're too bad. They have a new fleet, they have, they have good crew, 
and they have great catering uh, so overall it's not too bad of a product um, this is it guys let me know in the comment section below with you finger for the hammer rock and uh, hit the subscribe button like the video and check out my patreon if you want to join my journey join my whatsapp group uh, support my work a little bit it's always uh, greatly appreciated we're always almost 200 patrons what a great family guys where are we off to have a safe trip